I'm Christian de la Huerta. I was recently struck by the confluence of the dueling pandemics we are facing. COVID attacks our lungs, and I can't breathe has become the symbol and the battle cry for the now global protests against systemic oppression, injustice, and racism. Powerful words, both literally and metaphorically. We speak about feeling suffocated in our situation or a relationship. Breathing or not being able to breathe has layers of meaning in connection to freedom, constraint, and control. As a breathwork practitioner for 30 years, this has profound meaning for me. Breathing, of course, is what animates us, what keeps us alive. It's the process by which the body refuels and recharges itself with oxygen and life force. Beyond that, the breath has tremendous healing and transformative power. As I address more fully in my TEDx talk, the power of the breath. The breath is a constant. It's the common denominator in every type of meditation practice and in many spiritual paths. In fact, in most spiritual traditions and several secular languages, the same word can mean spirit or breath, depending on context. In that sense, we can say that shortness of breath is a shortness of spirit. In ancient Greek, pneuma meant both breath and soul. The word pneumonia means an inflammation or an infection of the lungs. Isn't it fair to say then that we are soul sick, that we are suffering from an infection of the soul? In the United States, the country most impacted by both of these pandemics, we are in the midst of a dramatic reality check, a wake-up call. Who are we, really? And do we truly stand for the values of liberty, equality, and justice for all? Yet fear is rampant all over the world not just here. Difficulty breathing and shortness of breath are symptoms of anxiety. It's what happens in the body in response to fear. So could the confluence of pandemics connected to our ability to breathe be symptomatic of a deeper collective fear? Perhaps of progress being made on the road to freedom. At first glance, this may not be clear. It may not make sense, but it's the same dynamic that keeps many of us in relationships we have outgrown or jobs that are sucking the breath, the very life force out of us. Our egos, our minds, are programmed to maintain the status quo, even if that status quo is miserable, or at best, comfortable, but unfulfilling. We fear the unknown and often settle for the comfort of the known. We are afraid of change, even when that change is in a positive direction. Humanity is at a choice point. We're at a crossroads. On one hand, forces of tyranny and authoritarianism offer the seduction of pseudo-security and the alleviation, the soothing of our fear by means of control and domination. Yet freedom is a steep price to pay for pseudo-security. On the other hand, the spiritual awakening seems to be unfolding with a promise of breaking boundaries and limitations of true equality, justice, and opening to love. 
As part of this shift in consciousness, meditation and mindfulness practices are becoming more and more common, even in the workplace. More people are questioning their life purpose and awakening to the idea that they came here to do more than just sit in an office pushing paper 40 plus hours a week, week after week. More and more of us have just had it with endless wars, with hatred, oppression, and violence. More people are connecting to their intuition and find themselves comfortable reporting moments of synchronicity, speaking about interconnectedness and oneness, and extending that to our stewardship of this earth and all its inhabitants. So, which path will we choose? Which path do you choose? Louise Hay wrote about the metaphysical connections to illness and the organs of the body. She identified lung problems as a sign of grief, depression, desperation, a fear of receiving life, or feelings of unworthiness in terms of living life to the fullest. Lung problems also point to emotional wounds that are not allowed to heal. Because the symptoms can show up as life-threatening, pneumonia can be a sign that we've had enough. We've just had enough. And that seems appropriate to these times in which we live. So let's take a deep breath. Literally, right now, let's take a deep breath. Let's together counteract whatever subconscious fears may be at work in us. Take another breath, deep breath. And for just a few moments, Allow the breath to slow down, to deepen. Let's feel ourselves fully opening to the breath. As we open as well to new opportunities and to the promise life offers. Taking another deep breath, feeling relaxed, comfortable, breathing freely as we welcome change and new possibilities, even if we can't yet see how things will turn out. Let's fill ourselves with the breath of life, the holy breath, like a gas fills a container completely, distributing itself equally throughout that container. Allowing ourselves to be animated, energized thoroughly, entirely, from the top of the head to the tip of the toes. When we climb a ladder, we have to let go of one rung in order to reach the next. And there's that brief moment of not knowing, of not having a safe hold. But if we keep reaching, we will grab the next rung. We can see it. We can see that next rung. So we keep reaching. We keep breathing. We just keep breathing. One breath. Let's imagine a world in which we all are truly equal where justice and freedom and opportunity are available to all, where the same rights, privileges, and protections are shared by all citizens, where balance exists between the genders and the masculine and the feminine inside each of us, where all are treated fairly, regardless of the pigmentation of their skin 
or their facial features, or how they pray, or what they believe. Regardless of their age or physical capabilities, or how they express their love. We can see that next rung, and we keep reaching for it. We just keep reaching, and we just keep breathing. Together seeing a time where we can all feel we can breathe. Start bringing yourself back slowly, gently, and feeling open, relaxed, safe, energized, and revitalized, animated, and filled with life.